Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. How you doing? It's been a while. Do apologize for uh, the tardiness, the absence of live content over the last couple of weeks. It's been hectic uh, in the world of Bugsy Malone and Sean, and so it's been a little bit limited. But we're back with Devil's Advocate, and you're back with the two, my, my most favorite people to stream with, you know, for this particular show anyway, without trying to, you know, be personal. I love these guys. Dave and Johnny, how are you, Dave? Welcome back to the show, mate. No, I'm I'm keeping well, Shawnee, you know, as well as I can after four and a defeat to Newcastle. But yeah, I'm keeping good, my man. Thanks. I'm uh, glad we can get this back up and running in between now and the end of the season. I really do enjoy this. So, uh, thanks for having me back. <laughs> good to have you back, mate. It's good to have you back. Johnny, buddy, how are you doing, mate? You feeling vindicated? Um, yeah, no, listen, it's thank God. Um, uh, I feel a bit vindicated, yes. Uh, I have predicted this was going to happen. But I've got to say, uh, thank God you didn't come on on uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And even now, Wednesday, with the, all the dilution of the passing days, um, it's still feeling a little bit raw. I brought out my uh, 2007 Spurs Cup, um, right, just to <laughs> take me back to the days where we were still shit. Um, <laughs> but no, no, listen, I'm great. it's great to be have the gang back together. I've really missed it. Um, and so uh, I'm happy we're all, we're all back together. It's good to have us back. Good Looking us back. forward to, to it. Looking forward to it. As am I, as am I. Guys, in the comments, how's everybody doing? Look, I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love. You know the rules. Take your shoes off by hitting the like button on your way in. Smash the like. Smash the subscribe if you haven't already. Get down into the, into the description. You'll find the links for Johnny's Twitter and for Dave's channel, The Irish Hotspur. On Johnny's Twitter, you can find all of his socials. Make sure you're spreading the love. Make sure, listen, I'm sure this one's going to be devil's advocate in its purest because there's lots of different ways we can kind of digest what's happening at Tottenham at the moment. But the argument or the, uh, the, uh, the, the narrative of the show is to sort of figure out how we can improve from where we are to where we need to be, you know, and that looks a lot like conceding a lot fewer goals and scoring more. Does that need a change in tactics? Does it need a massive change in personnel? What does it require? And we're going to get through it. I'm just going to quickly say hello to everybody, uh, to, the, to the members. Drew Zilla's in the house. Great to see you, mate. How you doing? Robin Owens in the house as well. Great to see you. Lee Harvey, to Luke, to James. Uh, who else we got? Zeddy, I look like a nurse. Appreciate that, mate. I'm going to literally put my <laughs> camera on. I'm going to change, change my top. Get your top. stethoscope on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely outrageous way to to, to start. Have a look at that walk there. <laughs> nice, yeah. Don't look at that that at that walk. No, George is in the house as well. Not happy with the form of Ganassi Spurs in Melbourne. Oh, nice, George. Nice. Good to see you guys. Nice to see Roy as well. Nice to see everybody else, guys. If you are watching this back, then you can also, if you prefer it on Spotify, if you prefer the kind of that vibe, then you can you'll see it on Spotify. It's also on Facebook and. Uh, all the other places, Twitch and tw Twitter and all that stuff. Right, guys, let's uh, get straight into it. Dave, look, with nowhere else to start other than the Newcastle game. Open-ended question, man. What the hell happened? We're not up for the fight, Sean. You know, that sort of weak mentality around Tottenham is still there. Look, I'll put more on the likes of Son, Romero, Benticor, people who suffered the same fate up at St. James's last, last year, sort of allowing it to happen again. But for me, look, I, I think there's been a lot made of the back line, and I can understand it to a certain degree. But what I don't hear many people say is that three of them goals came from the forward line, not being, a, you know, losing possession. The first one came from Son not being able to hold up the ball with his back to goal. He shouldn't be playing up front, like I've been saying for a lot of this season. It's not the first time it happened. It happened against Luton as well. Second goal, Newcastle pressed us. People go, where's the plan B? Vicario went to go over the bypass the press, put it out to Brennan Johnson. Brennan Johnson's caught snoozing on the halfway line. He may as well be on the fucking bus, you know? And then, oh, sorry, no swearing, sorry. And uh, then, then the third one, um, Sonny again loses the ball and Newcastle hit us quickly on the counter, you know? As much as the back line need to take responsibility for defending there, the forward line also have to take massive accountability and they're escaping a lot of criticism for this game because on the eye with this forward line, it's very easy to go after that back line for everything. When you go back and look at three or four goals, three of them from us losing the ball up front and one from set pieces, which is a huge problem at Tottenham anyway. Now, I hear a lot of discussions when it comes to 
set pieces lately, bringing in a specialist, and I think that'll help to a certain degree. But we are not the biggest team at Tottenham, and we're going to struggle with set pieces until we get, you know, bigger players in here that can learn to deal with set pieces. Like Harry Kane last year was one of our best defenders from set pieces. You don't have that this year. Richardson, when he's out injured, has been one of our best defenders. From Emerson set Royale. Yeah. Emerson Royale. You know, and apart from that, you look at the likes of Basuma, Bentecourt, Madison, Son, Johnson, Werner, you know, Poro to a certain degree, Adoji to a certain degree. And even Van Den, maybe one of his weaknesses we spoke about is in the air. He's you know, the air. teams that set pieces aren't going to change until we get bigger, a bigger, a bigger sort of players in here to be able to deal with them. We're always going to be vulnerable. I, I, to me, honestly, you know, when you look at last season, People say, oh, it wasn't as bad as last season. Let's take, let's go back to last season, shall we? Last season, the club was in absolute free fall. Okay. Conte's left. The dressing room is a mess. We got infighting with the players. You know, the crowd hate, you know, the fans are hating on Levy. Everything's terrible. Stellini comes in and he wants to prove he's not Antonio Conte. And he produces a new system and we're five down after 21 minutes. OK, it was horrendous. Right now, I'm not being funny, but there was nothing better about this performance. We we're meant to be in a different era, a different era with positivity, better players. We got a better defence. We got a better midfield. We got a better everything. It's amazing. And the mentality is there. And what I saw, no fight, no heart. No determination. We didn't win the first ball. We never won a second ball. We mm -hmm. couldn't hold the ball up. You know, um, it was one thing after another. And, you know, Dave, you know, pointed it out. You know, Sonny twice lost the ball, uh, couldn't hold the ball and bang up to up top. Right. And the ball's in the back of the net. There were so many things wrong with it. Um this zonal defending, I'm sorry, I've mentioned it time and time and time again. I don't care, right? I, I'm coaching, you know, kids football. Never in my life in kids football have I ever had 11, all 11 of my players inside the box. Not one of them on the post. Not one of them uh, on the halfway line. If you put one player on the halfway line, you're taking two of their defenders, potentially three, away from the action. If you have one halfway between the penalty box and the halfway line. You're taking another one away and you have one on the edge of the box. No. What do we do? We have no one on We have no one on, on any of the posts. We have no one on the halfway line. We have no one on the outside of the box. We have 11 players, right, zonal marking. So even if we do win a header, which is rare, the ball's coming straight back because there's no flipping. There's no outlet. And if you want to break, you can't break. <laughs> Because there isn't anyone there. Why do you think Iksak and all the others, the, the, and or Gordon, they played on our shoulder, up front, bang, onto the halfway line. I've never seen the marking, zonal marking. You had Kulu, who tried to mark Fabian Schell for the, for the fourth goal. He got splotted, swatted off like a fly. I mean, it was like ridiculous. I mean, everyone knows that Shah is, is, scores plenty of goals. We know he does. Mm. I mean, they had... They had, I think it was 155 passes the entire game. That's all. We had 600, nearly 600, 77% yeah, possession, and you lose 4 0. That's the sort, that's sort of like going out on a date and holding the girl's hand all night long. And then the second you go to the toilet, some other bloke comes in and steals your bird and, and takes her home and does the business. Yeah. You spent all your money, <laughs> you've wined her, you've dined her. Yeah, and then Don't you got to come pace. back. Why are you holding you're holding the hand? You've got to do something with all that possession. And, you know? and you're four nil down. But listen, like it's look, I could go on, but there were so many fundamental errors. You know, Anthony Gordon. Look, I wanted Anthony Gordon, right? I've got to be honest with you. Was Same, Brennan man, Johnson him. on my list? Absolutely bloody not, right? Anthony Gordon was. I I remember seeing him in the Everton game at our ground when they were absolutely shocking, right? They were abysmal. And yet there was one shining light throughout the whole of that game. That was Anthony Johnson, uh, um, Anthony Gordon, who chased down every single ball, battled for everything. And like, he really stood out. You know, that game, it was eight key passes, two assists, one goal. And let's be honest, 
it could have easily been six or seven. You know, Kraft hit the post. There was a couple of chances they missed. I mean, what would you say then? Really, what would you say then? I, 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 I don't understand. And another thing I've got to say, I'm because I, I'm going to rant, rant in a minute. I'm mean, as raw and emotional, but I'm only stating the bloody facts, okay, guys? I'm stating the facts. Against Forest, it wasn't going right. So what do we see? We see Ange act. He acted right. He bought off Basuma, bought off Sart, and he bought on Benton Court and Hoybier. We we applauded that because that's what we've been asking for. When it's not going right, react. I saw on Saturday exactly what I saw against Fulham. Against Fulham, we're 3-0 down. Nothing's happening. He's not changing anything. Then we go 4-0 down. Goals disallowed. Then he makes a substitution. What was he watching in that first 45 minutes on, on, on Saturday? I expected a substitution at halftime. Basuma was MIA, right? They were all shocking, but he was MIA. Did he make a substitution? No. He just sat there. What were we three nil down before he made the sub, or was it four? I, I lost track. Johnny, can, can I just? Can, I've been playing devil's advocate for a second, right? Yeah, of course. That's what so. I, I think that Tottenham's philosophy. We're, we're going to talk about the adaptability, the the the, the, the late substitution. We, we can go into the minutia, but I do believe that there are some teams to give credit where it's due to Newcastle. There are some teams that have a specific set of ingredients, including a manager who I call exploitative, right? Who who works all week looking at the tape, figuring out ways to take advantage of the vulnerabilities of other of the opposition. Obviously, Ange doesn't do that. We're going to talk about that. I've got a segment for that with the Eric Dyer thing in a second. But but you look at Eddie Howe, he does. He's probably best only bettered in the Premier League at doing that sort of thing than by someone like Unai Emery, who will set his team up in a variety of different ways, depending on, on who they're playing. But Gary O'Neill? Gary O'Neill does it, and, and you could you could even argue David Moyes does it. There's a few of them that do it, right? But Eddie Howe does it very well. But on top of that, the template that's emerged, in my mind, of how to play against Tottenham is to set the midfield up as a man-to-man -man mark, and if you have three people in the midfield that are more combative, that have more tenacity, more fight, more desire, more fearlessness to go into the 50-50s, and you also happen to have pacey, tricky wingers who are good with the ball at the feet, then you have a set of ingredients that is almost like the, 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 the kryptonite to Superman. It's the, like the polar opposite of what Tottenham's system can handle. And I just wonder what we, we were speaking about this all, you know, last summer when we were when we were excite, excited about Ange, we were saying along this journey, there are going to be games where this system is entirely found out, where this system is just where, where we're where we're smashed to pieces. And I kind of thought that Newcastle away is one of those games where they <laughs> have, even despite their injuries, they have the ingredients that just are per uh, the, the perfect counterbalance for Tottenham's philosophy. I don't know if that happens very often, though. Can I ask you, though, Sean, do you really believe, OK, that apart from Bruno Gomes in the middle of the park, right, do you really believe that Longstaff and Anderson should be a threat to our midfield? Do you think they should have been bossing every ball and every second ball? If you're telling me when I we're playing Rodri under or Rice... underrated, personally. I don't I think Long no, Longstaff is massively bad. underrated. I'm not saying they're bad players. What I'm saying to you is, look, before that game, guys, right, I did my, my thing before the game, right? What was I worried about? Their defence is, is broken. They, they've got so many holes in that defence, right? But the danger, without doubt, is a counter-attack from Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon and Isaac, right? Okay, we, we all knew it, right? What I'm saying is, where was the planning to negate that, right? We seem to enhance the possibility of them exploiting it, not prevent it. I, that, that's, what, that's what I see. And I think Gary O'Neill, he went on television and he told them on Sky very eloquently how he beat Tottenham, how he beat Man City, how he beat Bournemouth. He set out the blueprint, right? And others have followed. Listen... I can understand if we're, if we're being ripped apart by the Arsenals and the Man Cities and the Liverpools, but 
We were demolished by Brighton. You were there. Mm. It could have been six or seven at Brighton. We were demolished by Fulham, right? Wolves had us not only in the first game, where they, you know, you know, they, they got us in the end, and in the second game, they completely had us had our number. Isn't, up. That's what I'm saying. But isn't this part of the? Isn't this what the blueprint that we all thought was going to happen? It was going to be exciting this season, but it was going to be volatile. It was going to be days when it just didn't work. And when it doesn't yes. work, it's completely like a paper like cut. Deserby. Like Deserby, you mean. Like Deserby's tactics, where, yeah. you know, he's either superb, but if he doesn't have the ammunition, I get that. But, Sean, I accepted that when we had the mass injury crisis. I, I, I hear you, and I totally accept that. I accepted it when we had five games on the trot where we didn't win a game, right? We drew one, lost four. I accepted all of that. It was unfortunate, but that's football. I can't accept it now when we've played the least amount of games in any any team in the Premier League and we are struggling. For is fitness. that because you're not seeing is that's because you're not seeing us improve? I've seen I see regression right. not progression in the players that are now returned from yep. injury okay. are now in that team. There's no excuses, you know, apart from Richarlison up front which I think is a big loss like Dave for leading the line. Um, because Song Kong. Um, but I, I think there's something I just look, I am not Ange out. I want to, I, you know, I hope he succeeds. I want him to succeed. But I feel like there's pig headedness here in this refusal to to accept a molecule of change. And mm -hmm. I find it very, very frustrating. Is it better than Conte Ball to watch? Yes, of course it is. But it's not so good on the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I Dave, yeah, Dave, uh, Dave, Dave let, me, let me ask you this, Dave. I'll let you, I'll let you respond directly to, to Johnny, but um, but including your answer, for me, whether or not the frustration, because I, obviously I, I, I actually echo a lot of your thoughts, Johnny, right? But I just yeah. want to, you know, for the idea of devil's advocate, this was always part of the journey that we were expecting to have somebody say. But for me, the, the frustration is that I don't see us improving in any of it or even attempting to improve in any of it any of the areas of our weaknesses, like set pieces, like the obvious midfield battle where you get beaten at the high line. Dave, is that is that what's frustrating for you? Is it the lack of progression at this point in the in the process? Um look, I, I sort of disagree with it to a to a certain degree. I think I think there's a lot being made after this defeat. No one was complaining when we slapped them the opposite at our place, the same tactics and stuff like that. Same with Aston Villa. Everyone's going on like Ange Poster Coglu has found out. To a certain degree, that forward line has been found out. Everyone knows, just sit low, block, you got three forwards who all want to play the same way, running behind and stuff like that, um, and give them space. So they take that, take the ball off us and hit us on the counter. For me, when you look at what Ange is trying to implement, getting us on the front foot, playing in the opposition half, it works. Go back and look at vast majority of games. We dominate a lot of possession. But when you don't turn that possession into goals and you and leave the team in the game, you're always going to be vulnerable to the counter-attack. But the ideas, like the ideas and the philosophy that Ange is trying to play is there. It's just we need to improve that forward line massively. We don't take enough risk on the ball. You hear Ange, he was asked about it last week. Are your players allowed to shoot from distance? He said yes. So then why aren't the players doing it? Look, I think there's a lot being made. When you look at what Andrews had to deal with this season, piss poor pre-season due to going out to, uh, you know, out, out, out to a, a country in the middle of monsoon season. Yeah. Shit planning. Pulling the rug of Harry Kane right underneath him the, the, the eve before the season. And he had to, he had to, you know, try and reinvigorate that forward line and stuff like that. People forget that midfield tree. He hasn't been able to put out a consistent midfield this season. He hasn't been able to put out a consistent forward line this season for various different reasons, whether it's injuries, suspensions, players going off, representing teams for competition. And all of their, that. their international, they all have effects on, on everything we're trying to do. Coming out the back end of this season, you're seeing a repetitive tactic from teams. Just sit back and they talk them on the counter. Why do they sit back? People ask questions. Why are teams sitting back? Because they know we're going to dominate and get into their opposition half. 
But they've identified our forward line as the weakness. They know they can't hold on to the ball. They know they have to, with, with the three that we play out there right now, they have to score the same type of goal over and over again. So if they sit there, nullify that, nullify Tottenham, keep themselves in the game, and they'll back themselves with how fun Ruby are off set pieces and back themselves to catch us on the counter with a goal, to go and make a point, go and make a goal and stuff like that. But not everything that we're seeing is down to Ange Postacoglu. Not everything we're seeing is down to his tactics. To a large degree, everyone says he's found out. Okay, the only manager in the head of him in the Premier League right now, Unai Emery at Aston Villa. How long has he been at Aston Villa to get his squad? And people are going to pretend that there wasn't sort of, you know, trials and tribulations. Not, when long, not even a year longer. Not even a year longer, by the way. But he's had Listen, a Dave, more Dave, can he's I just, a Dave, can I just say that? You go to Arsenal and Arteta, exact same team, you know, it backed him through adversity and look where they are now. Same as Klopp at Liverpool, same as Pep Guardiola at Man City. You know, the thing is, we all accepted this season. We wanted to play a certain way and a certain style, a certain philosophy. We're getting that to a large degree. But we all accepted that there was going to be ups and downs come the end of this season. Now, one last pattern that is continuous at Tottenham Hotspur, and we keep putting on the managers, and for me, you have to look beyond it when it's a continuous pattern. Jose Mourinho, he started off well, right? And it tailed off. Conte started off well. It tailed off towards the end of the season. And it's happening again under Ange Postacoglu. So is that just Ange Postacoglu, or is that something that's inheriting that Tottenham if it's been here before him? Listen, uh, uh, Dave, I hear exactly what you're saying and everything you're saying is valid. What I'm saying is these are uh, my comments on a knee-jerk reaction to Newcastle. You know I've been saying this for, no, no, for I, weeks yeah. now. Yeah, I have been saying this for weeks now. And it's not because I want him to fail. I just want him to adapt. I want him to adapt, right? Okay. Well, let me ask, okay, so how know, do we adapt then, J Johnny? So... I um, mean, are people uh, saying... Right, so when I say what I say, I'm called every name under the sun... Because, you know, I because <laughs> that I must be Ange out. No, I'm not Ange out. I understand, as your phrase says, if you zoom out, right, and look at the bigger picture, you know, have, you know, we're, we're in fifth place, right? Uh, are we better? Did we expect this? Harry Kane's gone. We know all of those positives. What do you want mm. me to do? I'm sitting there watching a game of football and I can see the flaws. The opposition can see the flaws. And what I'm asking for is adjustment. Is is that is that unfair? Is that unfair to say what, that we're looking for adjustment? Do I want to see sixteen frigging corners and then the opposition? We keep giving away corners. We know we can't defend them, yet we keep giving them away and we can't defend one. We don't change our formation at any corner ever. I don't get it. We are exposed. It's a I combination, want... right? It's a combination. Yeah. The if the system was played to perfection and you had, and all of the things that Dave's pointed out, and by the way, Dave, I agree with what you said. I didn't think, I didn't think he said anything wrong. He's not Johnny, wrong I agree with any with, of it. I, I, he's, he's bang on with everything. And I think, Johnny, you're also calling out the same, like you're talking about it from different angles, but you're, you're, you're both, there's, there's a problem in both sides, right? The players on the pitch are not um, performing, are not performing to their, to the level that's expected. Correct. And the, to me, the manager also, has a stubbornness and a rigidity to him. This idea of fluid rigidity or whatever, rigid fluidity, whatever it was that we were all talking about all year. Well, what that when you break that down, what that means is the philosophy is rigid. Yeah. But because he wants all this versatility in every position, he's basically handing over the responsibility to the players to enact the fluidity that will figure it out against the teams. And again, we're going to come to the quotes in a minute from Ange about Eric Dyer's interview where he says, do we spend time practicing and preparing for opposition? The answer is no. To me, regardless of whether or not the players are doing their job, if you're not spending time at least considering what you're coming Correct. up against on the weekend when you only have one game a week or sometime one, one game every two weeks, then you're missing a trick. Now, even if you don't think it's necessary, there's an opportunity cost. Because let's say, for example, Arsenal are as good as they are, but they happen to be bad at, at defending corners. I know they're not, yeah. but let's say they happen to be bad at defending corners. We're playing them in two weeks. Tottenham would not be looking at that right now and taking and thinking about how to take advantage. They'd be sitting there going, oh, well, listen, let's just make sure we play with a high line and you get it down to Timo Werner, you pull it back, get to the byline, whip it in, focusing on us. You're missing an opportunity 
by not even considering where the vulnerabilities are in the opposition. 100%. And that is on the manager. That is, is that on not arrogance, though, Sean? Is that not arrogance? Is that well, not arrogance? I, I, I just think it's based on, like, he's he's had success wherever he's but, gone. But is that not arrogance, Doing... Sean? But... Sean, is that arrogance? Do you think Pep and, and, and the top managers have so much arrogance that they have total disregard for their opposition when they play? No. I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think that. we're missing you know, fundamentals here, though. I think when you look at Klopp, you know, you, we talk about Klopp, Arteta, you know, Guardiola. How long have they had in the job? You know, when they first came in, it was all about struggled. their philosophy and their yeah. style of play. Implement Correct. that. You know, yeah. and then it's up to the club to continue. To, if they like what they see on show, it's up to the club to continue to invest in that to get the very best out of it. Look, with the set pieces, let's not sit here and pretend they aren't being told what zone they have to mark and, you know, what player they need to keep an eye on and stuff like that. Of course they are. What Ange can't legislate for is players not wanting to go and attack the ball when it comes in. That's a player issue. No one is telling them to stand still with their arms side their side like a bloody pencil. You know, nobody. That's just not happening. Let's not pretend that it's there is there is some coaching towards the opposition and their threats and stuff like that. There, 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 there is, especially from set pieces and stuff like that. Let's not pretend it's not happening. Well, Do you think? On. Well, look, well, let's, let, let, let's look at this, right? Ange Postecoglou on Eric on Eric Dyer's no tactical training claim. I haven't got the full thing here because I couldn't get the full quote, but. It the last bit, the the last bit. If if um, yeah, the last it basically bit, says if you're talking himself. about. Do we do training where we're standing around and working on how we're going to stop an opposition, how we're going to break down? No, we don't do that. <laughs> I don't get that. I mean, to me, sorry, I, you know, you can attack me as much as you like. I don't get that comment. That's worry. It's worrying. Whether well, forget the forget the adjective to describe whether it's stubborn, it's arrogant, it's ignorant, it's obnoxious. It doesn't matter. It is what it is. That's his vibe. He he wants to perfect. And a lot of people, I, I had this conversation on an upload I did the other day, a walk, and a load of the comments were going, "Sean, you're you're forgetting." He also said, "No, for, the first part of the process is to embed your own philosophy. Once you've got that settled in, then you move on." To the next bit. What about your new players? What about when you when you summer? So what's going to happen in the summer if you bring in five new players? Well, so they're what, going to have to spend the season learning the philosophy before they can learn how to play the opposition. It, it yeah. seems it seems like it's well, we've got that much time on our hands during the week that you'd think that they would be able to spend at least a little bit of it going. Oh, is there any like is there any weaknesses in? that we can take advantage of? No, let's just play our game and, and, and not worry about it. To me, it just seems like you're playing half a game of football that way, that you're not you're not analysing the full picture. And I, I'm not a fan of it. That doesn't mean I'm not a fan of Ange. I really want it to work out, and I'm more we patient. All we all do. Course, we all course. do. But at the same time, I 100% agree with, John, with, with Dave that there are... There's more to come. Like this system could have had more better performances against teams where we've won and against teams where we've lost had the players played to their particular level. But if this idea of fluid rigidity is the system's rigid, but the fluidity comes from the players, then you need to have a set of players that are that are that are leaders that are willing to think on them for themselves, that are able to figure it out for themselves, and that are able to kind of rise to the occasion and if you look at Tottenham versus Newcastle on a man to man in fact all of the games recently where we've been had where we've had Fulham, our ass handed to Brighton. us Fulham, Brighton, we've lost in the individual battles we've lost when teams have gone man to man which tells me that the teams that we have especially the midfield we have a lot of technicality we have a lot of good players I'm a fan of Hoybier I'm a fan of Benson I'm a fan of Bissouma but when it comes to the battle they're not up for it as much as the next guy is, or the opposition is, and yeah. that is a problem if the fluid rigidity is handing over responsibility to the players to figure it out. So what you just said there is is, is one of my bone of contentions with, with all of this, right? So Ange trusts his players. I will teach you, I will tell you my philosophy, and I will tell you what I want. You go onto that pitch, and it's up to you to deliver. Now, when you're dealing with such a young squad, 19, 20, 21, 22, it's a very, very young squad, okay? I don't know about you, but when I was 21 and someone told me what to do, 
half an hour later, I'd forgotten and I was doing my own thing, right? My point is, there doesn't seem to be players, look, even, even uh, players of 25, 26, they don't always follow instructions. But I believe top managers interact with the situation live. So if it's not going right, pull them over to the side when there's a break in play. Um, you know, pull them up, pull them over, say, look, that you're not where you wanted you to be. Ange doesn't believe in that. Ange believes that the players should sort it out for themselves. But what you said, uh, Sean, I don't see the leaders leading it no. out on the pitch. I look at Arsenal and I see Odegaard like, like this, you know, having a go at them. I see Declan Rice leading, having a go. I didn't see it on the on the when they went one nil down, I must hasten to add. But my point here is I see leaders on the pitch. I don't really see um, the leaders. I, what I've seen the last few weeks um, is Madison's form being terrible. Um, but I see him Niggling, yeah, well, arguing. Say, say, say well, that for a minute. I've got just, that as a segment in a minute. Yeah, all sorry. right. Sorry. Just, just, just on the, just, just on the leadership again. This is part of the process. Look, when it comes to the captaincy, right? You mentioned Odegaard Rice. Arsenal brought them in, right? We have to buy in leaders. Look, Son is a figurehead for the club. Great figurehead for the club. Great in terms of commercial revenue. A nice, a nice lad to a lot of people. Is he a leader on the pitch? No. no. The reason why he was given the captaincy is because we had a lot of turnover in the summer and we're going to have a lot more turnover and they want someone who has their close best interest at heart to be captain well, during that tumultuous period. But you've said it yourself. We don't have the leaders. We have to buy them in. But therefore, when I'm just stuck between a rock and a hard place, you can't give a guy who's new in the door a captaincy. You just can't do that. You know, so you have mm. to give it to Sun. So until we buy them in, I'm just stuck between a rock and a hard place. What do people want them to do? Unfortunately, we don't have owners that are going to give half a billion pounds to a manager to go and put everything right in one season and win teams. So there's going to be no, ups and downs in a season. There's going to be troubles and stuff like that. But sometimes, you know, we, we at Tottenham Hotspur, we make absolutely everything the manager's problem. The reason why I think Ange wants players to think for themselves, and a lot of it behind that is, is because when you're in games, when you're in moments, a manager's not going to be standing there telling you what decision to make on the football. That comes from you. That comes from well, you. Arteta You're does. For that. Huh? Arteta micromanages his team. Every time there's a head injury or someone's gone down looking He's got them out. He wants them back on the sideline giving micromanagement. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that either, to be honest. I think that's one extreme to I the other. I think there's a balance. I think yeah. there's a balance, Sean, between nothing and the, and what Dave's saying is 100 is is, is Right, 100 but the thing right. is, it comes down to they're being micromanaged. What have they won? Uh, listen, yeah. I'd go, well, right. I'd like to this is my point, right? No, but this is where I'm no, going. But, this is where I'm yeah. going. When What have they won? They haven't. Because they can't think for themselves in the big it's game. When the big games come around and the pressure's on, they're looking around for little Arteta to give them everything they need to know. Ange doesn't want that for Tottenham. He doesn't want that. He wants, when the big coins come around and pressure's on, he wants you to be able to think for yourself. And that's where it's all building up to. Well, let's okay, hope but on that point then, Dave. Who, who does, can you tell me one other manager in the league that has no interaction during the game? Because I can't, I can't think of one. And my last point before you go on, Sean, is, yeah. you know, I hear this thing, Ange doesn't have his players, Right. He authorised every single one of those purchases in the summer and in the uh, and in the January transfer window. And let's be honest, right? That back line is better than we had before. Destiny Adoji is better than Ben Davis, right? Um, Mickey Van Der Ven is better than who we had before. Vicario is a better goalkeeper than we had before. Pedro Porro is playing better than he was before, and and. Um, Romero is 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 better than he was before. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that you know he had there has been improvements. To say that Ange hasn't got any of his players and whatever, I agree with you. We need three three windows. He said so himself. So if we have this summer and he brings in four or five five players, he probably needs at least five. What is going to be the story then? What what can be the story then if there's no if they're not following instructions? Because players don't always follow instructions. They just the problem, don't. The problem will be Johnny that 
And Ange has already alluded to the idea that there's still loads of work to do yeah. in, every, in every department of the no, pitch, hidden. right? Yeah. He, wants, he wants more, you know, obviously a replacement goalie. He wants more sub, some squad players for the defence, midfield and forward line. The problem will be, or the ex, not the excuse, the, 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 the debate will be then, has he been backed? Because yeah. if he really needs five or six players, then we know that Daniel Levy... Like with the FFP and the PSR thing and all that stuff and his general sustainability model, you're not going to have a Todd Bowley environment where they're going to throw a billy at the situation and then, and then sell off the golf course to cover the costs or sell off whatever. Like to sell off the hotel that's not even built yet and then loan it back. All that stuff that Chelsea are doing, absolute madness. But they're, like they figure they've got, they've got, they're getting away with murder, but there's still there's no success there. But Tottenham aren't going to do it that way. And so if we need six players this summer to help Ange get the players in, then you know that each of them are going to be 20 to 40 million pound players. You're not going to get a hundred million pound Declan Rice type player in. And so are you really going to identify the type of player that improves the squad, improves the first team, both technically, both for the philosophy and also with the mentality, this tenacious figure it out for yourself, leadership on the pitch thing. Those those types of players that are better than what we've already got, and we've already got a squad that's capable of finishing fifth in the hardest league in the world. Yeah. Those sorts of players are 10 a penny if you can find them at 15, 20 million pounds. They're difficult. They're needles in a haystack. And if Tottenham haven't got massive budget, which we won't have, and Ange wants six or five or six players, then we're gonna we're gonna be getting in players that are that are not of the level. Yeah, to 15, close the 20. On on but you're argu- you're 100 right. My argument here is I hear what you're saying. If if for example we had bought a Declan Rice or a Paulinia, I really believe that a player like that can have a fundamental difference to our squad. I know they say one player doesn't make a team. But, it's but the in core. that particular role, it's the, the most the six. Is the most the six is the most important role, more important than anything else this summer. It's the most more important, important than role else. in modern day football. Is the six, and especially okay. for this, especially for this system. I was saying this before, before Ange pu- m- managed his first game. I was saying you want to. This whole system depends on the guy who can protect the back four, who can play the quarterback role, but also has that tenacity to go into every 50-50, the mobility to get around the pitch and fill in the gaps because there'll be hundreds, there'll be so many of them. But that particular player at this level, Callum McGregor, is not of this level. Conor that McGregor. Player... Yeah, Conor McGregor, yeah. Yeah, Conor McGregor, yeah. He's a good fighter, that guy. Now, the... Callum, McGregor... Callum... Callum McGregor at Celtic, if you want to find the guy that can be that role for Tottenham, who can compete with City... And you're comparing, and you're, you're looking for the Rodri type role. They're not. They're, they're, you needles, in hay, they're needles in a haystack unless you want to spend a hundred million quid. And Tottenham aren't going to do it. So you know, Hoiberg is friendly with Rodri and Bentancur. They're all like mates, and they turn around to Rodri. I was told but that they said even you've struggled to play the six under Ange's system, <laughs> right? Because of the demands of what what the demands is and how exposed you are. And I believe that you would need two quality sixes. Like they've got Rice and uh, the party boy uh, in there to, to back him up. I, you know, I think, we, I think we need one world-class six to have a chance of really going somewhere. And I really would like us to, to, to go out and spend the money on a Paulinho or, 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 or someone of that ilk who can really be a game-changer um, I think, you know, I know most people want a striker, but for me, if we could get that world-class six, I think a lot of the, the other parts and components will slip into place. I think would be a more effective team. If you took Rice out of Arsenal right now, I'm sorry, they would not be where they are in the league right now. I don't believe. I, di- I disagree with everything there completely that you guys have both said. <laughs> uh, the reason why, uh, the reason why is... <laughs> We, we, we say it can't be done. Pochettino's team, we didn't spend hundred millions of pounds on. We just didn't continue the investment properly. Which... Was the six as important there? And we didn't okay. win anything with him either. No, but no, was but the we... six the modern football? Was it was it me... as the role? 
Sorry, go. Let me finish making my point, boys. Yeah. Let, let's not get happy here. You know, let me finish making my point. <laughs> Look, what I would say is, right, under Pochettino, we were only so far off it. But the investment into Pochettino squad changed when we started bringing in the likes of NG and Nkudu and stuff like that because of the yeah. stadium build and stuff like that. But if we would have continued, and you heard Deli Ali on Monday Night Football saying we're only a couple of players away, if we would have continued that, you know, we probably could have gone on to win something. We don't know. Look at Tiffs and Butts. We don't know. But where we were, if we added a couple of players to that, we could have. So my point is, we can build a team off the, so, the, the way we are signing players to get us close. And yeah, if no, you continue that investment, you could end up doing it. So I disagree, you know, that, you know, we need a £100 million player to do it. Look, I'd absolutely love a £100 no, no, million. I, that's not what, that's, I do that's, agree that you get a better mentality, a better quality of player and stuff like that. But look, at Tottenham, unfortunately, because we don't have the owners like Man City do, it's at Tottenham, it's always going to be the sum of all its parts. It's always going to be that way at Tottenham. You know, everyone has to contribute. You have to have a, a, a big squad to be able to do it and stuff like that. Um, and for me, I think it can't be done. You just got to continue to invest in the right way. I, 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 I totally agree. I, what I was going to say was, you, you're 100% right, because you and I have both spoken about We've not been successful buying big money players. So I know mm. I'm sounding like and I'm contradicting myself. I believe we should be doing what Paratic has been doing, bringing in the Vicarios and the, and the Destinies and the Sars for less money. What I'm saying to you, and finding the next stage, but what I'm saying to you, sometimes there is a position or a marquee signing, which is what something we used to do. I'm not saying we should go out and spend... 100 here, 150 there. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there comes Neither a time... Neither am I, by the way. Neither when, am I. No, I, I really don't believe that because I believe that Paratici has done an amazing job um, in, in acquiring the talent we have for the price we have, especially players like Bergfowl and all the rest of them. But I do think that, you know, if, if you're telling me Spurs would suddenly be willing to go and spend 75, 80 million on Itzak or 75 million on, on, on a Paulinho or an equivalent, I would welcome that because they are such important positions that could change our whole ethos. Back cornerstone, yeah. The cornerstone, backed by the lesser ones that you're talking about, who might not see marquee signings at the time. We want to find, you know, the Delhi Alleys of tomorrow and the Itzaks and the Gordons of tomorrow, but not pay sixty million. I'm hundred percent in agreement. I'm just saying sometimes a key. Marquee signing, which is what you used to be famous for when we in the old days, would be lovely. Look, yeah, I'd, I'd love a marquee signing. I've said it time and time again. You know, I'd love one or two marquee signings to sprinkle into what we've got to drag it up to the next yeah. level. But we ain't going to do it. We're just no. not. You know, when, not. When, when when you look at the Pochettino team, Hugo Lloris bought for what? I think 12 to 15 million at the time. Yeah. Kyle Walker, we bought um, from million. Sheffield United's Academy for relatively cheap, if not free. Yeah. Danny Rose from the Leeds Academy, from uh, very cheap. Jan, uh, Jan Vertonghen, very cheap. Alderweireld, 15 million. Then Belly, we bought off Fulham. Wanyama, we bought off Southampton. Harry Kane came through the Academy. Some we identified young at Leverkusen. You know, so when you look at that Poch team, it was almost there. And yes, it did need maybe that marquee signing or just a bit more investment. So it can be done the way we're doing it. We just need to continue to to, to uh, believe in the one philosophy and back back the one philosophy instead of chopping and changing all the time because this is what gets us in this mess. We keep chopping and changing. We keep going in different directions, different projects. Different managers require different teams. And we'll never, ever get a squad sorted out to be able to pull in the one direction behind someone or something if, 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 if we don't give someone the opportunity to build that and the continued investment to build it. No, I, I don't disagree. And by the way, my, when I was talking about um, the the money thing. I, I, I'm with. I'm not advocating that, or even expecting, or you know, any, on any level that Daniel Levy is going to change no. the habit of a lifetime and put us in financial distress and risk any. None of that stuff's going to happen. And for what it's worth, you know, the the likes of Alex Isak, as much as I think he is, I genuinely do think he's you know up there in the very top, the top ten of what he does in maybe top seven in what he does in the world football. He's not going to cost 60, 70 million. I was talking to Newcastle fans. Loads of Newcastle fans came into my comment section after my uh, Newcastle um, game review. Because uh, in the review, I mentioned how much I'd love to take advantage of whatever issues Newcastle have and get someone like him or a Bruno Gamarish. And the Newcastle fans were like, what are you talking about? Forget it. He 
He's not 60, 70 million. He's 150 million. Newcastle don't need to sell him because of FFP. They're just like the bottleneck is around their throat around spending money, but they don't need to raise money. It's not like they have to sell. They just can't necessarily spend as much as they want until their revenues are, are higher. And so, you know, to the question that I was, okay, let me, let me sort of sprinkle this in here with a bit of a rant, but the question I wanted, the, the question of the show is how do Tottenham improve? How do we close the gap next year on the three teams that are ahead of us? Now we know Liverpool are going to go through a transition, but they might receive 200 million quid for Salah. So they'll have money to burn. Arteta, you know, if Arsenal bottle it again, I'm sure Arsenal will go into a meltdown, Arsenal fans, and we'll see what happens there. But, but, Manchester, two <laughs> but Manchester, maybe, 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 maybe not. But Manchester City are, are that far ahead. They've got so much strength in depth and they always, when there's an opportunity, they're always going to take it. For Tottenham to close the gap to try and become a title contender next year, everything has to work in almost synchronicity, right? The, the system has to be understood and perfected by the players. But not only do we need to score a lot more goals than we're scoring, we need to concede a lot fewer. And if we've already got the back four and the goalkeeper that we're pretty much going to have, even if you do go and get a Polinia or whoever that perfect number six is that we're talking about, he's not going to be responsible for, for 20 fewer goals being conceded. He might be responsible for a few. And bear in mind that in all of the games that I remember Tottenham winning at home when I've gone or, or away, I remember moments in every one of those games where it, there was a masterclass from Vicario or a masterclass from Van der Ven at times. So we scored, we conceded 49 goals already. And if it wasn't for, for could have been many maybe. moments in many games, it could be, we could be 60 goals down. Easy. So Easy. How do we concede fewer goals with the defence that we already have? I think it's a combination of things, uh, but to be brutally honest. I think, look, first and foremost, we need to understand we're playing an attacking system this season where we're basically, at times, it looks like you're defending with two centre-backs, right? Um, whereas last season, we played 11 men behind the ball. You know, it's completely different. You are going to maybe, you know, concede a bit more when you are playing attacking football. Look, I think the players we've got, I think some, I, I, I think the majority of that five, I like them. They carry on the back four. I do like them. And don't get me wrong, I do think we need to tighten up. But I would argue if we actually use the possession a lot more to our advantage and kill teams, you you you, you kill teams' belief off, right? They don't have as much encouragement to stay in the game and, and, and stuff like that and catch Tottenham at the end of games and stuff like that where they have done this season. So if you use possession to your advantage and you kill teams off earlier with it, you know, that will help you concede less goals. Bringing in number six will help you concede less goals. But also, defending set pieces properly would help you concede less goals. The Cario learning to be, uh, you know, a man. Come out, claim man on ball. The old saying with the goalkeeper, you know, command his box a little bit more. It's a combination of things that will help you concede less. But for me, the main part of it is we dominate possession. We keep getting picked off, you know, in the forward line and stuff like that. If we could take more advantage of the possession, it gives teams less encouragement, less hope and stuff like that. And inadvertently, you would you would win a lot more games in a lot more in style and you would concede a lot less. Games would go a different way completely if you uh, utilise your possession to your benefit a lot more. Well, so, David, are you saying, okay. just, just quickly, David, on a follow-up, yeah. you say, do you think... That if if Timo Werner put when Brennan Johnson whips that ball in against Newcastle in the fifth minute, if 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 Werner puts that away, or a minute later, if when Werner hits the shot and it hits Sonny's offside, if we get one of those goals in the back of the net and we go one nil up, do you think that's an entirely different game that plays out then? And and the other one that came across and uh, you know he ended up hitting it backwards, which is an absolute magnificent achievement. Um, yeah, I do think it would be a complete different game to be brutally honest. You know, um, it to to a certain degree, I think it gives us a lot more confidence. You go forward with a lot more confidence and stuff like that. Players become more confident, try more things. Newcastle, it probably changes their game plan a little bit. They probably sit in a bit more tighter and stuff like that, and not come out as much, not press us as much because they're aware of the dangers that we possess. So it all the game slightly goals change games that's the old saying i'm not saying i'm not saying it would have you know we would have went on to win four nil or anything but we could have ended up going on winning three two or something like that but goals do change games look i, I have my doubts about Werner when we signed him about his finishing that was my biggest problem with timo Werner. so I, I, i'm just yeah but for, for what i'm 
what I'm hearing though is that if if the sis if the tactics aren't going to change, obviously we need to improve in certain areas. But ultimately, the way that we win more games, concede fewer goals, or or lose fewer games, is by scoring first. And then forcing the opposition we, to change their game plan. No, 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 not necessarily. I said there's a combination of things. I says it, I, what I said is if, if you we dominate a lot of possession, right? We get a lot of possession in the opposition third. Let's be brutally honest, we're boring with it. You know, we're nowhere near, you know, where we were as you know, and even at the first ten games of the season, Sean, you know, I'd sort of had my little problems with with, with the forward line. I still was arguing maybe it didn't oh, look football. correct. But when 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 you look at what we're doing now, it's completely regressive, it's completely boring and stuff like that. Big up, Sava. Big um, up, Sava. Good to see you, mate. Like, but if, if you do take more advantage of your possession, it does alter what the opposition does. It does breed a bit more confidence into you. They can change games. But also, combine that with bringing in, uh, you know, a better number six, combine that with defending set pieces, uh, you know, more, you can chip off 15 to 20 goals that you're talking about to be able to keep the clean sheets. There's no doubt about it. We need to tighten up, you know, if we want to be able to go on and challenge next season and stuff like that, or ultimately last the full season, we need to tighten up. But it's not just about bringing in a number six. There's a combination of things. And if you worry about your game first and, and, and use the possession to your benefit, when you dominate possession in games, you have to use that to go and score goals. You have to use that to go and kill teams. It's momentum change. There's loads right. of different factors in it. It can't help change games. Joy, just one second. I'm going to come to your detailed answer in a second. Just so I get it clear, Dave. So you're saying... So you're over, if the tactics don't have to necessarily change, you're not asking for the defence to sit five yards further back. You're not asking for a fullback to not necessarily invert only one go. This philosophy, this system, in and of itself, if implemented better by the players that we have or the players that we will have next season, can concede 15 fewer goals and can score 15 more goals if this system is just done better. So you're not saying that there has to be some sort of tactical adjustment necessarily. No, I, I don't think necessarily there has to be a tactical adjustment. Look, I think going into next season, when Postacoglu has more of the players that he wants in the squad and stuff, you might see a variation change with one of the fullbacks or or maybe how the six is asked to play and stuff like that. You might see a tweak. But that's when Guardiola started tweaking his system a little. That's when Arteta started doing the same. That's when Klopp, to a degree, started doing the same, when they had more. But I do, like, you know, and I do think that will probably come further down the line. But in general, what I'm speaking about will help you concede less goals, yes. Can I, can I ask, right. can I ask, right, look, first of all, this myth that, you know, Ange hasn't had his players, right? I think he's had quite a few. Right, that he's all all fries. The one thing I, I, I find a bit strange. But he I never said that, Johnny, he doesn't have these players. I never said that. I said if you no, 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 I don't, I don't, didn't say you. I'm saying fans, fan base, fan base is saying he hasn't had his players, right? But he has. He he's he he has had players, right? You know, people are talking like he's he's got no one, he's had no forwards, he's no other. I don't understand for a start how you can have 72% possession yet be the team that's knackered when you've only played one game in the week. What is going on? What is going on? Are they leaving mm. everything on the training ground? I, I don't understand it. We're absolutely shot to bits, right? We were second to the first ball. We were second to the first ball. We had no fight. We had no determination. I saw a Newcastle team that looked like they were playing for top four. And I saw a well, that's what you're, When you talk about people like Sean Longstaff, that's what you get. I don't know Elliot Anderson too well. I know he's a kid. But Bruno Gimmeresh, like those guys are like desire, fight. I don't want to hear it, though, Sean. You're he I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't want to hear that crap. I don't want to hear, oh, so what? They've got desire and we don't. You're right. They have desire. No, that's what I'm, no, that's, but yeah. I know, I'm saying it's yeah. unacceptable. I think that it's I don't know what's unacceptable. happened to Bissouma. Bissouma at Brighton was first to everything. Now it looks like he's having a cup of tea and a sandwich before he. Oh, I'm playing football. Shit, completely forgot. I'm sorry. He's second I'm to sorry everything. As well. It's embarrassing. I'm, it's embarrassing. And second of all, I don't want to hear this thing that like things can't be tweaked, right? I'm sorry. Look, use your brain. Why do both of our backs have to be at number ten, right? Why can't Destiny or Poro work out? You know what? Okay, I'm going to drop back. Let one go forward. I'll drop back. Cover the space. Second of all, when it gets like Piccadilly Circus in the middle of the park, 
when everyone is there, when Madison's there, Basuma's there, both our backs are there, and their defenders are there, and everyone's on top of each other. There's no space. Destiny, pull wide. Pull wide. Don't invert. Pull wide. Make yourself available wide. We've all seen what he did at Udinese, picking up that ball wide as a wing back, driving forward. He hurts players. The same with Pedro Porro. Pull yourself wide. Make yourself available. Those are the sort of tweets I'm talking about, Dave. Tactical tweets. Using your football brain on the pitch. If he wants them to implement and take control, like he's saying, he wants them to take control on the pitch. Let's see some green shoots of recovery that that's actually happening. Because I see Brendan Johnson cut inside. What are you doing? There's space on the flank. Use the width. There's a whole width of a pitch. Don't invert. One of you, take it upon yourself, if, you're, if, if we're going to adopt this system, to think outside the box. Look around you. Take advantage of situations. You know, this is why, you know, Anne said at the beginning, I want my players, if they see space, to drive into it. I thought, fantastic. What a great thing, because by driving into space, they create, they take players with them and leave space for others. I'm not seeing that now. I'm seeing they run into a congested area. And as you saw on, on Saturday twice, we run into a congested area. Song can't hold the ball up and bang, the ball comes out. I believe he's following instructions to invert. I, I can't understand for the life of me why a, a player that you, you and I both saw at Udinese absolutely terrorised people out on the flank. I don't get it. He says one thing. He wants them to adopt on the pitch and work it out for themselves. Yet at the same time, it looks like they're following instructions. Which one is it? No, there obviously he has a set game plan with instructions, but within them instructions, you know yourself, Johnny, you know, there's freedom to be able to, Should you know, be. deal with what's yeah. in front of you and stuff like that. But look, when it comes to what what you just said there, right? And, and people asking for change and stuff. If we've hired Poster Coglu, he's committed to a rebuild. We've committed as a club to a rebuild. Yeah which is what the narrative seems to be coming out from them this season, rather than going for win-now managers yep. to commit into a rebuild. Him changing, what does that solve in terms of summer recruitment? It doesn't. It actually dilutes it, convolutes it a little, muddies it a little when you start changing and stuff like that. If we want to implement what Andrew's bringing to this club, what we hired him for, it's best that he sticks to what he's doing now so that it's very clear what we need to go after in the summer. So going into next season, there's no hiding place. There's no hiding place for the club. There's no hiding place for the manager. If I we agree. start adapting and changing and little things like that, then all of a sudden you start going, well, if we go into games and we do this, we don't need to buy this in the summer and stuff like that. So it sort of convolutes the summer. For me, I think the reason why maybe he's sticking to it and stuff like that is to put on full blast, full show, what we need for this system so it's clear to absolutely everybody. You know when he says that there's someone said before the Pep and they, they don't change. I'm sorry, listen, you need to know your football, right? Pep was the one that introduces introduced inverted backs. Pep was the one that took John Stones and put him into the middle of the park and changed it all again and everyone tried to follow suit. And now it's Pep that's got his centre backs wandering all over the pitch, right? Football evolves, your phone evolves. Everything that we do in life has evolved. If you go back five years ago, Nothing is what it is, was, right? Cars evolve. Everything evolves. And football needs to, has evolved. And I, what I'm saying is I'm not looking for drastic change. I'm looking for a man who's come in and, is, as you rightly say, it's a work in progress. I don't expect miracles. What I'm expecting is, you know what, this isn't working. Let's make a minor tweak. Let's, let's, let's try something different. Do you not think that'll come probably next season though, when he's a lot more, maybe, to, when he's a lot more of his players maybe. to work with? I've got to be honest with you, Dave. Right? If he put three at the back and it didn't work, I would applaud it, even though it didn't work. You know why? Because I can see as a guy who's trying to fathom out, you know, what's best. Well, for are we not season. getting into the territory of what we didn't like on the Conte? Yes, people didn't like the defensive system and some of the stuff Conte done, but a lot of people tweets, didn't like minor the tweets. either. I, I'm just thinking when you're trying to work out mm. a team and the system, and your players. I think, look, I think very much so he's found out uh, as human beings and as players, he's definitely found out mm. um, about players over these last eight months. And I think there's going to be a few look, surprises. You, you look at people summer. like, uh, just just quickly before I before I sort of chime in, um, 
Johnny's talking about evolving. The one thing I haven't seen evolve too much in today's show is the like button being hit. There's 154 likes. There's 450 people in the house. Horrific. That number should be on at least 250, 300. It's been a bit of a fiery show. Smash the like button, guys. That's all I ask. You hit the subscribe as well. Make sure you get over to the Irish Hotspur and hit the subscribe over there. Make sure you get to Johnny's Twitter where you can find him most of the time. Also, his socials, all of those links are at the top of the description. Just go and hit the links and then new tabs will open up and you can go over and show your support for the boys. Um, guys, I do want to ask a couple of questions about the... You know, Johnny just uh, alluded to playing a back three. Obviously, that would be... I'm not saying that's the answer, by the way. Yeah, I know, I know, I understand. But one of the questions um, that I was going to ask was about James Madison. His form was excellent, first 10 games or first eight games, whatever. Then he gets injured, takes a while to come back. Since then, it's been like an old car, you know, in the winter, struggling to turn over. And you've got Gio Lo Celso, who has one year left on his contract, who go, according to reports in the media, pivots from being happy to unhappy to happy again, um, you know, like Bugsy Malone when she hasn't got a ball. And with Gio, you have a player that when he plays well, when he's fit and when he's on it, he's incredible. Is there a justification for a pivot in... The last seven games, eight games, whatever it is, with regards Geo for Madison. Because for me, I worry a little bit whether or not Madison is getting crowded out. I think that this system, when you have even Van der Ven and Romero, who are the furthest back on the edge of the center circle, six, seven yards inside the opposition half, and everybody else more cramped than that, the two fullbacks on the edge of the penalty area, plus nine or ten other opposition players, you end up, with about 20 players in the space Correct. of about 15 square meters. And even though Madison's probably got the quickest feet of any Tottenham player with the ball in stationary position, I don't think he likes or enjoys the lack of space. And I think he's really struggling to come back. And I don't just think it's his injury. I think it's also the compression. I think it's not suiting him. So is there a call to try something else? Or is it too risky for Ange to do that against the teams we've got coming up like Arsenal. Gio first time pass. Gio, what Giovanni Lo Celso does, he's he is very good in these tight little spaces. Well, you see when he came on, bang, first time, ball outside of the foot, first time pass. No, no having out, no having to put his foot, his, his head up, bang. He that's what he's good at, right? I'm not saying he hasn't been a major disappointment for the club. I'm not going to even sit there. I'm not going to even make excuses for the amount of injuries he has. But what I do know is. This is a guy who can play football to a very, very high level. What I would say is James Madison has scored four goals this season. Four. OK, let's, let's, let's put it right. OK, in a team which is far better than the one he left. Um, his last few weeks, he's I've seen him shout at Vicario. I've sold him, uh, seen him shout at uh, Vic, uh, Vicky van der Ven. I've seen him have a go at the referees. I've seen him rabbit punch. I've seen him get involved in all sorts of scraps. But what he isn't doing is leading. He's not leading. He's not demanding the ball. He's not influencing the game. And, you know, this is a one game, two game, three game. If you speak to any Leicester fan, they will tell you not only did he have his injuries, it took him three or four games before he could get back. Well, I think it's now seven games back, is it, from his injury? I yeah. don't see the green shoots of recovery. Apart from the goal he scored um, from um, Brennan Johnson's cross, I'm not seeing much. What I did see was the madness of Giovanni Lo Celso comes on for a game. I can't remember which one it was. Was it Forrest or whatever? And he changed the game. I can't remember which game it was now. I have to remind myself. He had a really good game when he came on. And then the next game... He's not, not only is he not playing, he's brought on in the 89th minute when we're going nowhere in the game. There's something going on. Um, I know he likes the club. I know the club want him to stay. But would you stay if you were him when you're, when you're not getting any game time? Even when Madison is injured, he put Kulu there. He wasn't fit, though. I would sell it, I'd sell him anyway because yeah. the guy's made of glass. But 
I was yeah. just wondering about whether or not he deserves You a need chance. another one, though. Do you not? You can't yeah. sell. My point here is if you sell Geo, which is what everyone wants to do, right? I, I, I understand that. I'm not going to argue the point. I, I believe not. But if you sell him, you cannot not buy a creative mid midfielder. Oh, of course. Yeah, you need someone. I mean, that with, Andrew Walton yeah. that we were linked with, and, you know, I, I was going on about him. Oh, he's a load of crap. Why would we want him? He's been thrown straight into the Palace team. Done right? brilliantly, by the way. He's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'm not saying he's like a worldie, but my point is that we need someone, a creative midfielder or a midfielder that's going to take the ball by the scruff of the neck, right? Demand the ball and influence the play. And I think, you know, Madison right now is not that man. He's, he's just not. I, I know the name. Don't be fooled by the name. Look at the other players look at the other creative midfielders within the Premier League right now and he is he is not performing to anywhere near that that level when it when it comes to Madison I'm actually going to contradict myself a little but when it comes to Madison I think what you're seeing now is a guy that's fully aware he's under pressure trying to yeah. make that team for the Euros you look at how Bellingham affects games week in week out Foden Cole Palmer people like that compared to him there's a chance he might not go on. I think we are seeing that frustration. I think there's a lot of excuses made for someone like Madison, but I'm going to make an excuse for him in a minute. When it comes to Madison, great players like Madison, they learn to operate in tight spaces. This old crap that, you know, we're flooding them out. Great players operate in tight spaces. That's what makes them great on the eye. Great. And that's why people flock to watch them. Madison isn't doing that right now. So I do think that's an excuse for him. However, when I look at Madison, when I look at Kulu, when people talk about Sun stats off the left-hand side, they're all going to be, you know, down this season when you don't have a proper number nine in the box. You don't have a proper striker in there. All their numbers are going to take hits in terms of crosses because they all have to do the exact same thing, the one-dimensional, the one, the one dimensional, the one way. You get a different number nine in there proper. You can, you can get Madison. You can start playing balls from different angles in there. The wingers can start crossing balls rather than have to get to the byline and put it across the six-yard box all the time. There's Even if everybody's compressed into 15 square metres in the like just outside the box? It's just not producing the numbers. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying to you, uh, Dave, is that even if you strip that out and you put it, you, you put uh, Richarlison there or another striker, I don't think he's influencing the game at all. At no, no, moment. no. I, 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 yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. But I, like I said, I, I, like if, if, if he did have a proper player in there, I think, you know, he'd be a lot more confident. He wouldn't have to look for the same thing every time. Where I do agree with you is, you know, I do think he should be influencing the game. There was a couple of games ago where he picked up the ball twice and I was screaming for it just before he'd done it. Instead of making three passes out to Johnson, make that one pass over the fullback's head, onto his feet, get him the ball in space and time. And Madison done that twice. He has the capability. Why are we not seeing more of this from Madison? Why is he not going, demanding the ball, getting turned and trying to make stuff Exactly. Happen? For me, I think he's playing too safe. He's playing within himself. But I do think not having a great front line, not having great movement off the ball and everything else does not help him to a certain degree. When it comes to La and I'm not having a dig at you here, Johnny, because I hear loads of people across, you know, various, you know, uh, who was it? El Tel Cockerell's been on my stream, bigging up LaSalle. So, you know, Tyler in my chat's always bigging it up. And I see it across social media. Everyone tells me how much of a great player he is. When are we going to see it? How long How long do we have to wait to see You can't give him five up? minutes or ten but, minutes. Johnny, every manager Dave, cannot I understand. be wrong. Dave, every manager I, cannot be wrong on this Dave, guy. Dave, I cannot argue with you when it comes to Spurs, right? What I can argue with is when I see him drag Villarreal to the Champions League semi-finals, when I see him play for Real Betis when he plays up front and he's scoring double-digit goals and assists, right? When I see him play for Argentina and he is a crucial fundamental part of that team and he's ahead of McAllister and anyone else. He's one of the first names on the he's team. He's not suited to the Ars Premier League, though. He's not suited no, but to the what Premier I'm, League. What I'm saying to you is I cannot hear that the guy isn't a player. I see some of those passes on the outside of his foot First time pass on the outside of his foot. The guy has got talent. And I just think that when Madison's, I think, look, I think one of the problems with destiny, there's no one to challenge him. And I think with, with Madison, the problem is there's an arrogance. When I didn't like, when we were 3-0 down against Fulham and Madison's coming off and he's smiling, what the, really? You should be throwing your shirt down. 65 minutes, you're fit. He don't tell me he was injured because he wasn't injured, right? 
he wasn't injured, right? I don't want to see that. Top players are fuming when they're being bought off, right? When has and James Gio Madison? In, come on. Sorry, just quickly. When has James Madison ever in his career had to play in a compressed method like what he's asked to now? Even at Leicester. At Leicester, he never had to do that. At Leicester, Correct. every team he played against, he would have space because the majority of the time, Leicester were playing a low block and trying to counter. And he would have the space and the creativity against 16 other teams in the Premier League that consider themselves better than Leicester, apart from that one season. And even then, they took themselves, they took advantage of yeah. people's disrespect of Leicester. He hasn't had that much opportunity for England. And when he has, he hasn't done particularly spectacularly. And even at Tottenham, in the first 10 games when he was brilliant, that was the period when nobody knew how to play against Tottenham. But now he is playing in a team where every team who is frustrating us as a fan, who we consider to be uh, weaker as a man-for-man -man on a team sheet, they do the low block, they compress the life out of the game, Tottenham squeeze everybody, apart from Vicario, into the opposition half. And Madison has about half a half a second to think. And in the first 10 games, he was doing creative stuff. Since then, since the game and the tactics against us have changed, he has struggled. And I don't put it down to just a, a long-term injury recovery process. Yeah. I put it down to him being put into the deep end of a very, very big swimming pool that he is not used to swimming in. And I don't think he has adapted and learned how to play in this model who because signed he hasn't experienced it before. Who signed him? Who who devised the tactics to get the most out of him? Right? So I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I get it. I get it. But the manager's is job... Is he the sort is, of guy that's going to... If I'm right, just quickly, Johnny, if I'm yeah. right about that, if I'm right that he's that he's in a new environment and he's not, not adjusting... What are we seeing from him as vice captain that shows me that he's focused on that rather than something else? All I see from James Madison is arguing with the referee Correct. every five seconds. So for well, me, is... he needs competition next season. And if it's not low Celso, it has to be somebody else that's going to come in. And Ange has to have the 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 um resilience. The the cojones to put him on the bench if he's not playing well enough. And if it's a Morgan Gibbs White, if it's a Gonchalves or whatever from you know from 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 Portugal, someone that's extraordinarily talented, then I'm like Madison doesn't guarantee himself a starting place, just like Sonny shouldn't either. In this system, you need to have players that are based on meritocracy that fit the model. And for me, at the moment, James Madison is not doing enough. No, you just, you said you just, it, you uh, said, uh, go on. No, go on, Johnny. I'm just going to say, you know, this is what's frustrating me because, you know, you knew what James Madison's game was. You asked for him to go. You personally called him. You're playing in a system. Your job as the manager is to get the best out of him, okay? Between you and James Madison, you need to figure out, look, James, what's going on? Why aren't you influencing the games? Oh, because this, right, I'm too congested. I can't get my game right because there's not enough space. Okay, well, what we do is we fathom a, a way around it. Okay, let's let's assume that that, um, that conversation's gone on. Even when he's not performing, right, he's not bringing Geo on. He's not bringing, like, anyone. There's no one ans answering the question. And I believe... 100%, okay, if you get rid of Geo, 100%, 100%, and I've said this time and time and time, you need a top creative midfielder. And James Madison is not performing right now. Pop him on the bench, right? Show him, you know what? You ain't doing it now, buddy, right? Yeah, I know you got the name. We all like the name, right? Everyone wants the big name. I'm sorry, Sonny, I, was, I, I applauded. Ange on the weekend for taking Son off because right. he was abysmal. And I'd like to see the same. He's taken James Madison off after 60 minutes or 65 minutes. Bench him. Start without him. See what happens. Look, I, I think I agree with you. And I, I would love a meritocracy round here. But in order to have that, you have to have a complete squad, right? You have to have yeah. everyone chasing for the same thing, everyone hungry. Where I do think Ange could have helped himself, the reason why I don't think he uses Lissasso and would drop Madison for Lissasso between now and the end season, 
Lacesso ain't going to be here next season. So he's not going to put time and effort and invest it into someone that ain't going to be here. It's wasted time. It's wasted energy and it's wasted, you know, so I don't think he's going to do that. Um, so I think that's why you keep seeing Madison start. But let's not forget, when Ange was doing preseason, he thought he had Harry Kane to feed. Madison also signed on the dotted line thinking he had Harry Kane to feed. That completely changed, which always, was always going to have a detriment. No, that's not true, Dave. That's not true. And well, Ange, said, Ange said from the day he arrived that the plan, he, he was very much aware that Harry Kane wasn't going to be there. Yeah, he said he knew. He said he knew. No, not, 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 not necessarily. He said, you know, if, if, if Kane isn't here, I'll adapt. He didn't necessarily say that the, he, he didn't know Harry Kane was gone. I think he, he did. did. I think he, he did, mate. I think you can't you can't say that because you never you didn't know whether Bayern Munich were going to put up the money. That I'm, I'm pretty sure Harry. Ange said in an interview. He said for the day I arrived, I was pretty. It was uh, I spoke to Harry, and the intention for him to leave was was made pretty clear. So he always Wait. knew that he was going to, in all likelihood there was going to be a situation where Harry Kane was... Am I, am I wrong, Johnny? I'm, I'm pretty sure... No, I'm no, he that. said he said he knew he knew that they'd be going. He was told that uh, he was going. Yeah. That's what he said. Well, I so, disagree. From what I read, I thought he said, you know, that, um, you know, there's a possibility he could go, but he'd work around it and he would adjust. But either or, you know, when you don't have someone like Harry Kane, my point still stands. Your numbers are going to be affected dramatically. And that doesn't help Madison. Um, look, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying about Madison, but you get a proper striker in there, it gives him a lot more options on the ball rather than having to do the same thing every single time. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. Okay. All right. Well, look, last, uh, last part of the show then, guys, last segment is, um, again, back to the, the initial question, how do we improve? Um, obviously, we all think we need a six. Someone who's a specific six to come in. Yeah. Uh, we all think we need a striker. Rumours out today, Dominic Solanke. That was a rumour that came out last minute in the January transfer window. I've got a video coming out about that later on tonight. But just to get your take on it, guys, um, you know, back to the point that the overarching point is if you want to get a striker to compete, if it's not sunny and you whether you think we should sell Richarlison or not, to get someone who's very, very good, who's going to get you 20 goals, is going to cost you a lot of money. To get a number six, it's probably going to cost you a lot of money. That's unless you can find some nugget of gold somewhere to get wingers. Uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money as well. Where do you see Tottenham, you know, improving the squad? And who would you like to see us do it with in order to be able to close the gap, knowing that Manchester City can improve again, Arsenal, Liverpool, Villa, Newcastle, Chelsea. They're all going to improve. If we need to close the gap, then we need to improve quicker, faster, and 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 better than the opposition. But that's if that's going to require some tactical changes, but it's also going to require a lot of personnel changes. Dave, how how do you see the summer uh, shaping up? Um, look, I'm excited about the summer, to be brutally honest. You know, I'm excited to clear more of the riffraff out and getting players that can, you know, sort of <laughs> go all hands on the pump to the, you know, to the cause. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I, I, I think we need to go again this summer. You know, Andrew spoke that the squad isn't fully his and stuff like that. So, um, look, for me, I'm excited about the summer. I think it's obvious we need to go and sign a striker to what degree or what calibre that is. Let's wait and see. I think we also need another winger in here. Be interested and see what decision we make on Timo Werner. Uh, personally, I'm not sure I would take the option to sign the guy. Um, to be brutally honest with you, you wouldn't. Um, you wouldn't sign so, um, Timo, no. No. Okay. Look, I, I get that it's cheap and stuff like that, but for me, I don't think he really solves an issue. Don't get me wrong. I think he's had more effect on games than what I initially thought he would. But games like Newcastle just highlights to me that I just chances are, you know. It's, Big chances in big games are going to fall to to one player or the other. And when they fall to Werner, he just doesn't take them. He just doesn't take them. And that's a problem. Our problem in that forward line is we need more goals. We need more creativity and stuff like that. And for me, Werner does not solve that issue, um, especially in the starting lineup anyway. 
Um, a number six will probably come in, and then we also need a backup left back to Destiny Adoji and stuff like that. So, look, I, I'm excited under the summer. I do think a lot of our recruitment has been good. I just think when it comes to the managers, we've chopped and changed the managers, which maybe doesn't show how good some of our recruitment has been. Um, and hopefully, I do think going into next season, sticking with and signing more players, I think we will see the rewards of it. I, I uh, Johnny, just quickly, sorry, sorry, mate. Give me two yeah. seconds before I do. I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm, I'm I feel a little bit uh, um, out of uh, ha out of the habit of running these shows. I've completely forgotten these super chats. Uh, Spurs GCTV. This was ages ago. Member for six months. Thank you so much for the for the ongoing support, mate. Afternoon, gents. The yes, let's see how the summer goes. The Alaskan Hotspur as well. Love the Devil's Advocate show. Sean Wright on Madison. Thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate your ongoing support. And Alan. Rakdos Madness, Gifted One, Spurs Talk Show membership. Thank you very much. I, I'm not sure where it went. I didn't see uh, it come through at the time. But whoever has got the membership, then make sure you, uh, you you say thank you to Alan. And Alan, make sure you put your name of your... You've got you've got a new channel, mate. Put your name of uh, the channel in the chat, mate. And uh, I will, I'll call it out so that everyone can get over there and, uh, and subscribe to uh, Rakdos Madness. Uh, really appreciate uh, the three of you for your ongoing support, guys. Everybody else in the chat as well say, Johnny, sorry, mate. Back to you. No, I was um, just going to say, listen, yeah. guys, please show your support uh, to the channel. Helps the algorithm. You know, like doesn't cost anything. Doesn't hurt. Just a little press on the uh, on the button where the finger is. Give us a like. It's good. And man. get the subscribes. Uh, you can get Dave's and, channel and, uh, and, and, yeah, and Johnny's. And just in subscribe. The, the We're all here to help each other, right? Um, look, for me, um, I, 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 I want a flexible player. Um, I wouldn't mind Gerstruder, right? I think we've mentioned him before, Sean. You yeah. know, he can play centre-back, he can play six, and he can play right-back. I personally agree with Dave. We need a backup on left-back. I like him, Cape, uh, at uh, Leverkusen. I've liked him for many years. Well, last two or three years. Um, again, he can play left-centre-back. He can play left-back. Um, Nico Williams, I feel like we need another an, another winger. Um, as for Timo, um, look, you like, Timo you like Nico not, Williams, yeah? Yeah, I do. Timo, look, Timo is is not a good finisher. What he is doing is creating chances. Um, he definitely is creating lots of chances. Um, but I agree with Dave. You know, funny thing is, when you speak to Chelsea Chelsea fans, when we were signing him, I expected them to take the P. No one had a bad word to say about him. To be honest with him, they all liked him. Um, Xerxes um, is, is maybe a possibility. A Morgan Gibbs-White um, at the back. I like Tosin. We've mentioned him many times. Mm. Um, he's six foot five. I've got an issue, though, with, with having three right-footed centre-backs. No, I, I, just... I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But what I'm saying is he's come through the Manchester Academy. He was their captain before he left. Um, he's a strong player. Very good in the air. Um I also like Murillo uh, at Forest. Um, I think he, you know, he, I know uh, he scored an own goal at the weekend, but um, no, he's, he's been very good. Um, I also like um, Samuel Lilling Jr. at um, Juventus. And I really like the look of Archie Gray um, at Leeds. Mm -hmm. There are, look, there's a, there's a certain snobbery Spurs seem to have about acquiring players from the championship we seem to not delve in we didn't go for um what's his name at uh about jared bowen we didn't go for Grealish until it was too late did you take, did you take jewsbury hall from leicester not no i no. wouldn't either no but what i like I got to called, the reason i asked that question is because i i, I said i've <laughs> <laughs> did a video I said Keenan and Jewsbury Hall. Sorry, I don't care if he scored thirty-five GAs for Leicester in the championship. No, no, I got called a snob. I got called a championship yeah, snob. But, but, but listen, look, Spurs <laughs> don't dive in and Jared Bowen. Hitchin didn't want Bowen. He looked at Grealish and turned his nose up for far too long where we could have delved in, and yet we said yes to Jed Spence and Clark, right? Yeah. And even then, with Clark, we got that one wrong. We got rid of him um, pretty quick. So my point here is, is that I look and I think uh, without any doubt whatsoever, Fabio and the team will look to extract value. Um, Bergvall, right, is going to be a player. Um, we haven't spoken about him a lot. For me, he looks to me like a young uh, Odegaard. 
The guy is six foot two. He's an absolute beast. I know he's come from Sweden. I know that it is a step up, but there's something very, very special about this guy. His body movement, his control of the ball, the quickness of the pass. And, you know, we're talking about signings of the summer. I think we've already made a fantastic signing. Um, you think he's the, Premier League ready? I, 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 whether he'll come straight in or not, I don't know, but I definitely think he'll get game time. He's six foot two. There's something about him, Sean. I don't often say it. You know, you watch the videos. Everyone's seen the highlight reels. I, yeah, he looks class. He looks unbelievable. You know, but Eric know Dyer looks amazing on, on, on YouTube, right? You make Eric Dyer yeah. look like. You know, uh, no, but even on even on Y Scout, I, I I watch him. Every, I watch his highlights every game on Y Scout. I just have no idea what the caliber of the defense is. Like he's he's running through them, but is it like running through, you know, a sort of twelve year olds? I I don't know. Well, what look, you, have to, you have to have a good foot to be running through anybody. You can sit twelve people that don't know how to play football in front of you, but you have to have, still have good feet and stuff and quick quick thoughts and all to be able to navigate and get through. Guys. No, I'm I'm, cer I'm certain he's good. I'm mm. just saying, is everybody going to be thinking, you know, what like we signed Papsar three years ago, right? Oh, he'll take time. He'll take time. And then we mm. and then we didn't see Papsar for a year. Then when mm. he came back for a year, he didn't he didn't get played under Conte. Mm. So it's, it's taken three years to see Papsar uh, emerge. Now, maybe that could maybe that could have happened earlier had Conte trusted, but. I don't know. I'd love it if this guy, if this guy's really the real deal and he's ready, he'd be sensational. But clip me, how... clip me, clip me, play it back. I, I, you know, I, there's, there's something about him. I don't know what it is. There's something about him. Look, you know, he's not, he's not like a fragile winger like we're used to, right? But I'm telling you, there's something very special about him, really. Uh, I, I like. This this guy, by the way, just quickly, Colin Cross. Yeah, Edison. Atalanta. The more, the more, when I first looked at him on the Y Scout, I was like, I don't know if he really suits because he can do a. He's a, he's very versatile. He can play in a bunch of different positions. But when you actually dial into the games where he plays in the in the holding role, he's he's that beast. He's got that ferocity and that nastiness and that I'm not scared of anything. South American kind of, yeah. you know, bravado. Uh, increasingly, I feel like if we were to sign Edison for that six, I think that I'd be very happy with it. I think he he, he looks like a real real. The player. Wolves boy is a possibility as well. Gomez uh, as well, yeah. I like yeah, Gomez. Gomez. And the Spurs, I know, are looking at the uh, Bologna boy um, plays up front. Calafiore. Oh, plays up front. Is it, is it not the, the striker? I'm trying to think of the Calafiore. You're talking about the, the left back? Oh, sorry, the left side of centre back. Uh, no, who is it? I'm trying to think of his name now. We've been scouting a few. That we've been at Bologna a lot, yeah. Or at least Fabio has. <laughs> Fabio has, yeah. Dave, um, what, what were you going to say about about uh, Bergeval? Sorry. Look, I I think you know there's definitely a player in there. You can see it with how he manipulates the ball and stuff like that. I agree with Johnny, uh, but I also agree with you, like you, you Sean. I don't think we can expect this lad to come straight in and be a, a regular starter in the Premier League over the course of the no. whole season. But it's about how we develop that talent. He's got all the raw skills, all the raw attributes to become a real player. It's how we develop it. Look, regardless whether we finish in Champions League spots or not, we're going to get some sort of European football. We're going to need a bigger squad. There's going to be games there for him to be able to develop them. Bring him off the bench. Start him in a couple of games in like cup games and stuff like that. You know, give him minutes and develop him. And it could very well be come out the end of the season, he might surprise everybody and end up forcing his way into that Tottenham team. He's already ahead of Alfie Devine. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, he's just not worked out, Plymouth. You know, like, I, look, there's something about when you look at a player. Sorry, what was that? Alfie Devine's not working out at Plymouth? No. No, he can't get a, he can't get a game. Can't get a game. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I haven't been following yeah, him. Can't okay. get a game. But listen, look, you know, I don't say it about many, many players. <coughs> and I know it's, you know, it's, you know, it's the Swedish league and I understand that, but. Swedish league is quite tough, you know, quite a tough tackling league. It's not like, um, you know, like a fairy league. Do you know what I mean? Um, so let's wait and see. But I think it's, it's it's quite exciting. I don't think a lot of people are thinking too much about what he can offer. 
You know, he's very good on the wings. Um, maybe he will be the person in the middle of the park to um, will sell Gio and he will be the one that backs up and comes on for 15, 20 minutes, uh, you know, when Madison's withdrawn. Let's wait and see. But I'm willing to be clipped and state that I think this boy could be something really special. Um, Fair enough, mate. La last question for you guys. Um, I, I, I've, I've got a tweet. I'm not going to bother bringing it up because someone's got into like in extensive detail on the coefficients around Europe. But essentially, it because of Liverpool getting smashed at home, even if they win with what happened with Dortmund getting past Atletico Madrid, it increasingly looks like Italy and or Germany. Spain or Germany will be the second team. So fourth spot is Champions League. Fifth spot increasingly looks like it won't be. Yeah. Um, which is madness because it was only two weeks ago that it was a 98% certainty. That oh, it's bullshit. It was bullshit. But either way, um, do you think Tottenham will finish fourth? Do you care either way? Would you rather us play in the Europa League or would you rather us play in the Champions League? What's better for the club? What's better for our budget? What's better for our um, season next year? Um, go on, you go first, Dave. Look, in order for us to finish in top four, two things have to happen. Aston Villa have to completely capitulate or Tottenham have to go on an incredible run and pick up maximum, more or less maximum points. Chances Aston Villa collapsing under Unai Emery, who's a very streetwise manager and gears towards, he knows how to deal with business end of the season is, is you know, experienced in that manner. I don't think it's going to happen. Are we going to go on an incredible run between now and the end of the season? Highly unlikely when our forward line isn't clicking um, the way it is and stuff like that. Um, so I think now we're probably looking at Europa League. Now, I'm not happy about it. I want to be in the Champions League, but there is arguments to be made that people don't want to go into the Champions League just to make up the numbers. Uh, my only gripe is if we go into the Europa League, I want us to all go into it with a mentality to win it. When we've been in Europa Conference League in these competitions before, fans have been very easy, quick to fuck them off, you know, and concentrate on the Premier League and stuff like that. We want we 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 need to have demands if we go into this trophy that we want to compete and we want to be in it come the business and um, of that trophy. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens. But I do think right now, as it stands, we'll probably have to look at uh, Europa League. But it might benefit us to a certain degree because it gives you opportunities to, you know, give someone like Donnelly minutes and other players like that, you know, and sort of, you know, grow them into what you want them to be and develop them and stuff like that. You know, a bit like what Arsenal used it for with the likes of Saka, Smith Rowe, people like that. So, um, you know, although it's not Champions League football, it can have its pros if used the right way. So for me, um, if Aston Villa win the two games in hand, they go nine points clear. Do I believe that we can make those nine points up before we kick a ball against Arsenal? Absolutely not, right? I don't. Um, <laughs> do we do we deserve fifth, fourth place? We we no. deserve what we're entitled to. And we, you know, people saying, oh, you shouldn't have been hoping Arsenal lost. I did hope Arsenal lose. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Our, our game should not be dependent on, you know, Arsenal doing us a favour or this one doing us a favour. Um I, I, I think. So you hope uh, Bayern Munich knock out Germ uh, knock out Arsenal tonight as well. Yeah, yep. I do, I do. Right, because listen, the coefficient is so Spursy. It's so Spursy. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I think in the last nine years, fifth place would have qualified for the Champions League. Right, this will be the first time in. Uh, you can check how many years, but it's years. Right, since fifth place wouldn't have qualified under the coefficient because we've been so dominant in Europe. Right. That's yeah. a fact. Go and check it out, right? Anyway, um, the thing is... Johnny, let me ask you this, though. If you uh, 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 So, reading between the lines, you're saying, yeah, look, basically, Villa's got fourth, therefore, fifth is ours. Let me pivot the question for you. How confident are you that fifth spot is ours, given our run-in and given oh, so how was, was Newcastle and United and Chelsea, they're they're all they're, they've that, got they've got they've got phenomenally easier run-ins than than Tottenham have, Sean, and they're only ten points away. Sean, I don't even think the way we're playing right now, everyone's going. I, I love the way everyone's going. Burnley, tick done. Sheffield United, <laughs> tick done. Right? Oh, I love it. Uh, is this the same Sheffield United who had that horrific manager that came to our grounds when they were at their worst? 
and we took a 97th minute goal to win the game. Is that the same Sheffield United? Listen, I played, we, I was up at Burnley for the Burnley away game. We still conceded two goals against Burnley when they were at their worst. But and, that was our make, best, and that was our best performance of the but, season. But if we're gonna make if we're gonna make the point for Villa, you know, if they win their two games, points on the board is better than in games in hand. Surely playing in this situation, points on the board is better than you know, sort of suggesting what the teams are gonna do below us. Ten points Listen, is a massive gap to make. It's, it's a huge it's a huge gap, right? But uh, well, my question to you is, is there in your mind, oh, do you, are, are we playing European football yeah. of at least the Europa League yeah. level next season? I think we're a Europa League or Conference League. We're, we're in Europe. You think Conference League is possible? We're in Europe. We are in Europe. <laughs> and going back to what Dave says, do I want to be in the Champions League? 100%. Do I believe this squad is good enough for the Champions League? 100% not, right? Would I be bothered if we were in the Champions League and we didn't we, we didn't qualify? Yes, I'd be okay because then we would drop down to the Europa League if we finished third, right? So I had that. But I personally believe currently we are Europa League level. I also believe the Europa League would help us with uh, the development of our kids. If we qualify in those first three games or four games, it gives us an opportunity for kids and people who wouldn't necessarily get a game to get a game. And there'd be nothing depending on it or us, you know, not qualifying. But um, I do think that something's got to give. I can't Spurs believe have I'm, to I, turn, I, I Spurs like I'm hearing things. Like It sounds to me like we're expecting... There's a, there's an outside chance that we might even not be playing Europa League. No, 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 no. I, look, I, look. We no? need to turn up, right? We need to turn up, right? Okay. I would rather better to have tried and failed, right? I want us to turn up. I don't want us to roll over, right? Look, Arsenal, other teams adapt their tactics, okay? Because they have inferior players and tactically they've outmaneuvered us. Teams like Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester City will not adapt their tactics because they believe their players are of a higher level to play their own game and not worry about our game, right? So, funny enough, we're undefeated against the top three at the moment. So, by by looking at the Newcastle game, one would assume that we're going to really struggle. And we might. But I think that Arsenal will come and play their own game and that will give us a chance to, you know, to, to actually do something. Hopefully, Richarlison's fit back to, to challenge those three. But... It ain't going to be easy. Let's be honest, right? Chelsea at home are very good at the moment at home. Um, Liverpool, although they're having an icky spell, right? They always have the Indian sign over us. They've done for years. We know Chelsea got the Indian sign over us. Man City, we have... I just don't want a scenario where we lose to Arsenal and we end up beating Man City and giving Arsenal the title. That would be... In my, the worst case scenario for me, that would be we get we will have uh Sean. Would Dave. you give up the Champions League for to, yes? To, to... Wow, okay, wow, right? I would listen. I, I look, I'm saying to you that um, I believe we will get what we deserve, okay? And if we get fourth, then we deserve it. The table's not lying, okay? And if we get fifth, that's what we deserve. Let's be honest, you know. We're lucky this season that Chelsea and Manchester City are so shocking. Otherwise, we could be having a different conversation. OK, next season, I believe Man United will be better. And next season, I believe Chelsea will be better. And it's going to be an even tougher ask to get the top five positions. Yeah. Just uh, quickly on with Charleston for North London Derby, uh, Johnny, just to maybe give you a bit of fuel in your fire for a campaign before the North London Derby, my man. Uh, Richardson has started 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 games for Tottenham this season. Started, which means he's been named in the starting 11. Oh, 12 posted. wins, three draws, two losses. You know, so, uh, you know, that, if, if, if anything, that's why that guy needs to be uh, playing up front for the North London Derby. But don't tell everybody because, like, when I posted that, the hate comes. The hate does come in. I've had to block the hate. The hate is dialed down today, mate. There's a lot of people that are uh, that are less uh, willing to to kind of to, to put the line in the stand around Ange at the moment. Sure, sure, sure. I look. I'm going to say it again. I don't hate Ange. I want Ange to succeed, but course, I'm not going to sit yeah. here and not question it. 
right? But this isn't reactionary. This is something I've been talking about when we were winning games, not when we were losing games. Doesn't matter no, what you say, people are still gonna say you're out, anyway. <laughs> Can't wait for the comments afterwards. Uh guys, <laughs> just quickly, uh Alan's Alan's channel, Rakdos Madness. Uh, you remember him from the fan cam mm. uh, from the fan show. He came on a couple of weeks ago. I love Alan the Pieces, awesome guy. He's just started his channel. Check it out at Team Tottenham underscore go. Um, get over to Dave's channel. Hang on one second. Go over to Dave's channel. No, that's not Dave, that's Johnny. Get over to Johnny's Twitter, <laughs> the link is right there. Uh, you can find that in the description. Get over to Dave's channel as well. The link is right there. Boys, what's coming up for you guys today um, on in your world? Is there any is there any content coming out on Twitter or on YouTube, boys? Johnny, for me, watching. good. I, for me, I, you know, I'll just be sitting there tonight hoping pain rains down mm-hmm. on Goonersville. Um, and I don't care about the coefficient. I'm sorry. I just need pain. I just need them to suffer pain. I hope Man City win uh, tonight for doing it for uh, for the country because their football's been fantastic. And that game, really looking forward to the game tonight because that game with uh, Real Madrid and, uh, yeah, and it's City be was, epic. Was, was just unbelievable. Um, yeah, no, so uh, I, I will uh, I will be taking a sabbatical. The only place I'll be will be here because uh, I uh, the Tottenham on tour only does um, after um, after game for anger management and we don't have a game for two weeks okay. um so i'll just be climbing the walls until the uh to the arsenal game. you're welcome on here mate you know anytime yeah, i'll be day. back I, here anytime i'm gonna be up in the uh the live stream i've got to make up for the live stream gaps over the last couple of weeks but i appreciate you coming on johnny you've been absolutely sensational as always mate true to the bone you're always talking your truth. uh dave what's coming up on the irish hotspur my man um I don't actually know, Sean, to be brutally honest, but look, I could sit there and do something today, but then again, my missus is off, so um, I'm not sure uh, what to do, you know. You've got bigger fish to fry. But yeah, but I also <laughs> need time to get my Harry Kane shrine back out for one night only, you know, and get it up, you know, behind the telly, ready to go for this evening. So look, chances are you're probably not going to see anything else from me today. So, you know, count yourselves lucky. You've got the best of me today. But uh, you will have stuff coming out tomorrow. I'm hoping, you know, get Shawnee on for a debate, Sean. I'll probably reach out to a couple of others, you know, maybe do a bit of a discussion at some point tomorrow. But your boy is going to the NLD. So if you want to see me, come over. I don't we'll mind. be we'll meet we got to meet up for the uh, North London Derby yeah. Dave. I'm yeah, just going to we'll, say we'll, we'll, we'll make a whole day of it guys. We'll make a whole day yeah. of it. You need to get over to Dave's channel as well to look at uh, the great stuff he does on the uh, the under 21s and the uh, and the under 18s. Um I know he posts uh, a lot of the videos. Um so, you know, that's our future always worth looking into. And um, I'm doing an under-21 watch along on Saturday because actually Spurs play have the rights to play the game on Saturday because there's no early kickoff in the Premier League. And yeah. they're in the hunt. They're back top of the league after a massive win during the week. So, you know, beat Man United and it should be uh, home. But is, be it, home on. is there, is this, I, I'm hearing, I don't know if it's right, but the Premier League too, even if they win the title, they, they finish top, they're not champions because then they've got to play a round-robin game. In a cup? Is that am I hearing that correct? So there's two things. There's the Premier League, there's the Premier League Two, which is the league, and then there's a Premier League Cup, which is the cup competition, which we're already in the semi-final for anyway. No, but I as someone said I I don't know where maybe I don't know. I don't know. I saw that they say if we if we finish first, then we will play the bottom team. Who are way down in the in in eight, the top eight, then go into some sort of maybe cup. Maybe. I mean, what's the point of that? A league is a league, and a cup's a cup. We look, I'll take team. the medal anyway. I'll, if we yeah. finish first, yeah. I classify we've won it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Listen, guys, and Mikey uh, Moore. Just before you go, Mikey Moore seen training with the first team. Wow, you know, generational guys. Imagine if he steps up next year. Unbelievable stuff. Still uh, guys, listen, that was uh, the, the uh, Spurs talk show, Devil's Advocates, back episode 22. Check out on Spotify and uh, all the different socials. By the way, also, if you are interested in supporting the show via a merch thing, then oh, nice. you can get uh, on, you go to, in the link in the description, shop.spurs talk show, you can get hoodies in a variety of different colors and some t-shirts as oh, well. If you fancy it, it's there. 
to be purchased. And I don't know what I'm doing with all that stuff, but I think it's figured out that the prices and all that stuff. Just go check it out. But shop.spurstalkshow.co.uk. Plus also spurstalkshow.co.uk is becoming a website that's going to have some written content as well as this stuff. So I'm going to try and I'm taking this stuff more seriously now, you know? But anyway, guys, Dave, Dave, Johnny, massive thank you to you guys for coming back. Massive thank you to everyone in the comment section for all of your support, as always. Love you guys. We'll see you very soon. And as always, come on. Come on, you Spurs. I'm the devil advocate. I'm the devil advocate. I'm the devil advocate.